They're now going to change the name of the sport. Why? To distance themselves from J.K. Rowling because of her views on, that's right, you guessed it, transgender issues. <sighs> Let's have a word with Portia Berry Kilby, political commentator with Young Voices UK. Portia, very good afternoon to you. Hi, how are you? I'm all right. It's hard to believe, really, that this is actually true, this story. I mean, it doesn't really make any sense to me in any way, shape or form. You read it upside down, sideways, translate it into Sanskrit, retranslate it into ancient Mandarin. No matter which way you read it, it's nuts, isn't it? It's totally crackers. It's the idea that changing a name of Quidditch will in any way distance itself from J.K. Rowling anyway. They're still going to be playing the game of Quidditch, which J.K. Rowling created and designed in her book. Uh, so it seems a very pathetic attempt to... It's just really virtue signalling, it's trying to be woke and not really achieving much of the process. No, I mean, it comes as no surprise to me that the big sort of Quidditch organisation in the world has been started in America. Because the great thing about Americans is they can't take a joke. They don't really understand fiction versus fact. And they've actually got an organisation called US Quidditch where people play Quidditch without actually acknowledging that you can't fly around on a broomstick. <laughs> yeah, I think the game in and of itself to play in real life is a bit ridiculous. You get grown men walking with a broom in between the legs and then trying to get a tennis ball off someone uh, in a yellow shirt. It's yes. a bit of a pathetic game to play ultimately. It's hardly cricket or rugby, not even football. No. I mean, do they pretend that they're playing inside of a Harry Potter film? Do they take on the um, auspices of the characters in the movie? Or do they actually genuinely believe that Quidditch is a game which exists outside of the film genre? <laughs> I mean, thankfully, I've never played, so I don't know any people on the team. Yeah. But it is kind of that, it's very symptomatic of people who haven't been able to grow up, which unfortunately is the generation that grew up with Harry Potter books, they've just never really become full adults. No. So they don't want to leave that element of childhood behind. Yeah. Well, and I mean, we did, we did try and get yeah. somebody from the Quidditch Association of Britain on, on the show, but unfortunately uh, they were being troubled by a Dementor, which was outside their house, and they said they couldn't come out because uh, it was too frightening. <laughs> I mean, you know, what is wrong with these people? Yeah, no, it's totally mad. And what honestly baffles me is that in Quidditch, the rules are that you can have no more than four people of any gender. So in theory, oh, really? it's a non-binary sport because mm. you can identify as whatever gender and provided there aren't four of you or more than four, then you're fine. Right. So it's surely so inclusive compared with most people anyway. Right. Um, I mean, are these people going to start getting worked up about the gender of various creatures inside of the Harry Potter world? Because there's an awful lot of creatures which are clearly not human, uh, which are clearly not um, either male or female and presumably are possibly of indeterminate gender. They don't seem to have got worked up about any of that. I mean, that's probably what they would like. They'd like it not to be a male or female dragon. They just want something which is none of the above. Tick right. box. Yeah. I mean, what about um, the various, like, the Dementors? I don't even know what sort of um, gender they are. I don't really care. It's, it's a great show. It's a great movie. It's a great book. It's a great thing to get your children into, into literature via. Um, but it's kind, of, it's kind of gone off the scale crazy, hasn't it, what's happened to J.K. Rowling? And the idea that, that she's created this entire world and the world that she's created is now being administrated by people who are rejecting her as an individual. Oh, totally. I think the backlash J.K. Rowling has faced for saying something very middle of the road sensible. She's not said anything against trans people and she's she just wants women to be recognised as women, men to be recognised as men and trans to be a separate category yeah. and not to have any prejudice against them, but simply stating biological sex against all of this backlash and yeah just thrown out <laughs> thrown under the bus and even the the whole cast and the reunion of harry potter mm. who's always missing is jk rowling it seems in great disservice and very intolerant it really does I mean, if, I mean i'd be tempted people. if i was jk rowling to just shut it all down and say right i'll tell you what all of you people are now no longer allowed to take part in anything to do with harry potter you're no longer allowed to make any money from it you're no longer allowed uh, to in fact benefit in any way whatsoever from my creation and see how they like that. Yeah, I mean, that would be a start. But I think she's just genuinely a very good, decent person. Yeah. And also, it's a story, you know, that has made most of the people who are now moaning the richest beyond their wildest dreams that they could ever have been. 
You know, nothing could have ever done that for them. And yet they're being incredibly ungrateful, at least, at the very least, and, and actually incredibly rude at worst. Oh, absolutely. Like, so rude. And also just nonsensical. Mm. It's just the fact that someone could have a different opinion from them, they can't even entertain. They cannot fathom. It's as though they are in their own little magical world and a Dementor can't come in and J.K. Rowling is the Dementor. Mm. Amazing. And I mean, what do you hear in your in your sort of day to day dealings with people? I mean, is this something that a lot of young people care about or do you think it's just the hijacking of an issue by certain, you know, groups of people who have become obsessed with that one thing only? I think, unfortunately, it is becoming more of an issue for more young people. Go back 10 years ago, the amount of times this was on the radar in schools, few and far between, at least when I was growing up. But now, like, at younger people I know, uh, my, my cousin's age, and there's all of the whole agenda is infiltrating the schools. And very little critical thought of it allowed. I wouldn't want to be a child in middle school, high school nowadays. Not no. at all. No, I think you're absolutely right. Well, listen, good to talk to you. Thank you very much, Portia. Portia Berry-Kilby, political commentator with Young Voices UK.